But so what is the what is the solution? Like how how can this be ended? So like the solution is again the you know bringing people accountable to their crimes um in terms of how we get there it will only happen with like a radical change in public opinion uh and for people to seek the truth and know the truth and to call out their governments uh for you know aiding and abetting the genocide and so you know the all other means have failed over the last 70 years in terms of like diplomatic means like the un like yes this like court case is going on but if history says anything like israel will always find you know some loophole or some way around it and you know it, it it'll be like too late before anything else happens and you know before october 7th norman finkelstein even says like he even like lost faith uh for that and so you know october 7th as horrific as it was uh all those all the horror of that like you can't like let that just go by and not take notice now like the purpose of that was to, like the whole world is now on notice and the whole world is looking at it and so how long is it going to continue to go on until people you know uh stand up to it um but it's it's just so difficult because you know even like any israelis who speak up like this guy uh for example um here in israel for generations we this is a teacher we killed the palestinians where he was like we injured the palestinians uh, opposing we the war in gaza and he tells what happened to him hundred palestinians in administrative detention we demolished their houses here in jerusalem we cut down their olive trees we confiscate their property their waters and most Israelis expect them to accept it. And when they do and when they don't accept it, they react in violent way. They blame them, the Palestinians. For most Israelis, I mean, we hold millions of Palestinians under occupation for generations. They are de deprived of their basic rights. And for most Israelis, it can go on forever. L don't get me wrong, I'm not justifying the, the, the violence. But this is the, 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 I think, the, the, the realistic conclusion. How can we expect the Palestinians to live under occupation forever? Every Israeli citizen knows clearly that if you dare to show the slightest sentiment towards the people of Gaza, if you criticize killing of innocent civilians, including women and children, in Gaza, you will be politically persecuted. You will go through public shaming you will lose your job and in my case be put in jail I wanted as many Israelis to know what is done on their behalf most Israelis don't know because the mainstream media doesn't show what really goes on in Gaza what we are doing in Gaza they uh, wished me to die they wished my children to die they threatened to rape my daughter that was the the, the kind of reactions uh, that were against i was called for a hearing on october 18th and the next day i was fired the police uh, asked me to come over for an interrogation the minute i walked into the police station they cuffed my hands and legs and confiscating my phone then Five detectives escorted me to my apartment and ransacked the place upside down. They put me in solitary confinement in a cell with no windows. They took away my watch. I didn't know when it was daytime, when it was nighttime. For them, I'm Hamas supporter. They refused to enter the class. And they began a very, very violent demonstration I was literally under siege inside the teacher's room. Dozens of students were on the windows, knocking the windows, cursing me. So, you know, that is a barrier to any solution happening, you know. Uh, this news is funded. And so as long as that continues and people, and so, you know, even if there's a decent amount of Israelis that, see what's going on and want to speak out against it it's so uh you saw like solitary confinement is no joke that's like one of the worst things you can do to a human being in terms of psychological torture 
and that's the level of punishment they chose just for a teacher who made some tweets uh, talking about the suffering of Palestinians. And so, you know, I get it in terms of uh, there's not a huge amount that the average Israeli citizen can do. Um, but again, all of Israel's actions are only uh, continuing because of U.S. support for it. So there's, a, I think, a bigger moral onus on the Western world and the people in the U.S. who live in a quote-unquote free country with free speech and a democracy and all that, you know. Uh, that's what like Murica is, but exercise that murica ness and you know uh, hold the government accountable and like uh, call this out for what's happening. And you know I'm hoping it doesn't take a generational thing where this continues on for another like 30, 40 years until enough of the people die off and there's enough like younger people who have positions of power and influence who can you know uh, make a change. I really hope it doesn't take that long. Um, you know otherwise. It, it will bring us like closer and closer to towards like larger scale war um if other countries get involved no one wants that except the us and the military industrial complex they're kind of egging on the war and you know and that's the thing like the military industrial complex kind of makes the decisions and more war equals more profits um and that's kind of like the 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 other kind of wrench in the plans um but you know the the solution, it's hard to say how exactly it'll play out and what exactly will go down, but we it's not about getting to the solution right now. It's about making steps towards that. And the most important steps that anyone can make is like educating themselves about what's going on um, and not falling victim to propaganda and not uh, being silenced. And I get it, you know, if your livelihood depends on this and you're risking losing, I don't want anyone to like lose their job because they spoke out against it, but, um, learn, research it in private, talk to people, you know, in your personal life, uh, normalize talking about it. That's like, you know, it's not about just like making public posts on social media. That's like probably like actually the least helpful thing you could do. But educating yourself so you know what's truly going on is is more important. If everyone does that, does that, then you know uh, the timeline will start to uh, bend more towards justice. Yeah, that was gonna be my my final question, like because a lot of people say that they understand what is going on, but uh, like they see no obvious way for them to help or do something about it. So, like, yeah, what do you think are some of the best ways to to actually do something about it. Yeah. Um, so I think the, in terms of like the most immediately actionable things that you can do as an individual, uh, one would be like boycotting Israeli products and companies so that you're not directly funding the genocide. Uh, you know, there's you can look up like Israeli boycott lists, you know, look at what companies support um, Israel. Like uh, there's this one we can I'll send you all these links after too. But the Witness News boycott list, they have a list of like all these companies and uh, reference to why specifically that they should be boycott to and the evidence for their support of Israel, for example. And it's crazy. Just like, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, you know, uh, to avoid all these different things like uh you forget like how deeply embedded all these like companies and products are in your life. Um, but that's, you know, and, and that, that actually has been having a pretty good effect in terms of, you know, economic sanctions by the, the, the masses of the public, you know, that's one way you have a way to express your, some sort of power is like what you choose to spend your money on. And, you know, uh, if you know all this information, I'm sure any human being would, want to take every step to avoid directly funding that sort of genocide. Um, so yeah, boycotts, sanctions, um, you know, if you're working in like venture capital, it's tricky because like so much of it is like super pro Israel, but you know, a lot of companies, they don't take investments from VC funds that are, you know, supporting the genocide. Uh, there's a website too, actually. Can you just like slowly scroll through the, yeah, to sure. the list while you, um, while you speak? Yeah. So also with the with the boycott uh, stuff too. There's usually like targeted boycotts. So instead of like boycotting all of them at all times, 
uh, having like certain periods of more intense boycotts on specific companies has proven to be more effective. Um, and cause it puts like more pressure on that single company at a time. So for example, Puma, for example, uh, that was like a pretty effective one in terms of, uh, like getting them to pull their support for like the Israeli uh, team uniforms and things like that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of them here. Uh, it's called the, the BDS movement is what it's called, uh, like boycott, divest, sanction. Um, and you know, they, publish kind of what their kind of current boy focus of boycotts are and stuff. So you can uh, kind of look at that stuff. Uh, there's this website called genocide.vc. Um, it's just a, a aggregation of all the VCs that have made like kind of genocidal statements or support, uh, like made public support for genocide. So, you know, I think that's another thing you can do is like, once you've come to learn what this really is, uh, look at all the people around you that are so vehemently in support of it and, you know, question your, uh, like allegiance to them, or at least like relations with them. Um, you know, I'm obviously I'm not saying like end your friendships and stuff. It's more about, uh, kind of seeing the true nature of certain people and what, uh, if you're actually okay with what they're saying and, you know, pressing, if, if you have, if it's someone that you know personally and you can talk to, like pressing them on it and, and coming to know, and oftentimes you'll find that, uh, the humanity will win out and, you know, they can come to learn some more of the truth as well. Uh, but a lot of people will just, uh, spit back at you with like vitriol and hatred and, you know, and anti-Semitism or, you know, you pull the anti-Semitism card or whatnot. And, you know, just don't let that phase you because, you know, I get it if you don't know enough about it and you're afraid of being anti-Semitic. But uh, if you've taught yourself the facts and you know the truth, like, don't be afraid anymore. Um, and, you know, because you know what you actually stand for and, and that you're on the side of the truth. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the other thing. Um, and then, yeah, like, it's, like I said before, educating yourself, spreading the word with like even just people around you, like your friends and family if every individual person talks like the five closest people to them about this in a sincere way, um, that can have a pretty profound compounding effect. Um, and then, I mean, if you want to go deeper than that too, you can go down the whole rabbit hole of, you know, uh, Israeli Mossad influence on the U S government, uh, the U S is kind of history of imperialism. Um, you know, the, there's a nine eleven rabbit hole. There's like a lot of stuff that you can get into in terms of if you actually want to know about the issue. But um, yeah, I'd say like the main, it's like an information war more than anything. And that's kind of how you can battle it. How do people push against their government supporting it? Like well, you can, the so US. there's, um, there's these organizations that make it really easy for you actually uh you can let's see uh so uh they have like pre-made hold on there's a couple of these so like jewish voice for peace which is like one of the biggest jewish organizations um in support of palestine uh they have like uh you can just like go on the website and press a button to like call your uh, local representatives from the the Senate and they have a script that you can just like read out to them. And so, you know, if a lot of people can, uh, you know, file their complaints with their local representatives that they want, you know, uh, these things to be addressed and, and talked about and stuff that will put political pressure, um, you know, if, and, and this is obviously, if you believe in democracy is a real thing and if that, and any of that actually matters and, you know, whether it does or not, and if it makes a big difference in the end, it's, it's hard to say, but I think if enough people do, will do it, it can't be ignored. Like legally they're required to, uh, talk about these things and, and address them if there's a certain number of their constituents that are bringing it up. Um, and so, you know, you can, you'll automatically be like patched through to representatives and you can call them on the phone and just like read that out. Uh, there's also email versions where, um, it's just like, uh, 
this one too. Yeah. So resist.bot, um, it lets you like mass email, like all your representatives in whatever like area you are, um, with like emails. So you can just send like the same message to all of them in with like one click. Uh, so it's, you know, stop using my tax dollars to fund genocide, like tell your representatives that, and, you know, it's not too hard to do. I get it. If like, not everyone wants to sit down and write a letter to each representative, but the tools are out there now to just like make it easy. And, you know, it's still better than doing nothing. Spend just two minutes, like filling this out and, you know, making your voice heard in at least that context. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you. And yeah, please, uh, please compile the, the link so we can include all of that in the, in the podcast show notes. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? Um, we, no, I this mean, is the, I think we covered a lot of three ground. times it's... longer than any episode that, yeah. 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 I was telling you it was going to be two, three hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it's crazy. Like I didn't even, I probably only, I hit less than half of the links and videos I was, uh, I collected. So <laughs> can, uh, there's more stuff there too, that we can go into, but yeah, I appreciate you for, um, bringing me on to talk about this. I think you're like the only person who's expressed any sort of, uh, desire to do something about this and like my like crypto friend group, at least, you know, the, the best I've gotten before that was just like, uh, oh shit, that sucks. Or, oh, that's really bad. Damn. <laughs> you know, like that's the most I've gotten. Yeah, because... Or like, no, that, that's like the best I've gotten. The most I've gotten is like silence and kind of people ignoring. It. And you, you've seen this too, kind of yeah. in, the, in the chat, like most people just ignore it or tell me to take it elsewhere or, you know, uh, it's making them uncomfortable. Yeah. So like, let's not discuss it. And it's, it's pretty dark, you know, just saying like, Hey, like you might be funding a genocide. And then the response to be, don't talk about that here. Yeah. And it's like, especially, it's especially lame in crypto just because it feels like we're shitting in our own mouths because the crypto is supposedly all about freedom and uh, like uh, Equal helping opportunity. people reach freedom and all of that. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, we don't care about that. Like, okay, yeah. let's go buy meme coins then. And yeah, pretend exactly. that we care, we have values. <laughs> exactly. Um, and actually, this would be a great thing to end on as well. Um, Vitalik made a recent blog post on Make Ethereum Cypherpunk Again, where he talks about how the crypto community has kind of uh, strayed away from the original, like, cypherpunk ethos. Um, and, you know, we should, like, revitalize that, those, like, values and culture. And so... He's like, what are, what is the cypherpunk values? Um, and so he describes these like seven values here. Uh, and basically Israel is like in like diametrically opposed to each one of these values and is like the biggest example of these values being broken that exists in the world. So for example, like uh, open global participation, Palestinians are living under apartheid law where they have like less or no rights and their participation in daily life is permissioned. So like open global participation, this means like anyone should be able to participate as a user in maximal equal footing. The Palestinians clearly are not able to do that. They can't trade. They can't, you know, uh, fly anywhere. They can't leave. They have no jobs. Um, they're completely blocked from participating in, in the global scale. And so per their participation is permissioned by Israel uh, versus the cypherpunk ethos is participation should be permissionless. Decentralization, minimize the dependence of an application on a single actor. In particular, an application should continue working if, it, if its core developers disappear forever. Uh, Israel's government centralized control of all the resources and all the political power. The Palestinians have no right to self-determination or any sort of you know, uh, self-independence in that sense. Uh, and this is another interesting thing too. Right before October 7th, Netanyahu is uh, Israelis are protesting against Netanyahu because he passed this law that essentially grants more power to the government and takes away power from the Supreme Court to hold the government accountable. So before the Supreme Court had the power to uh, remove the government if it deemed that or re remove the leadership from the government if it deemed that it was breaking 
laws or you know was a uh, uh, unsuited to lead or whatever and he changed the law to like grant him more power so it made it, it that is centralization of power in the government and like shirking of uh, accountability and israelis were you know there's million i don't know millions but like tens of thousands of israelis protesting this all summer long um right before the attacks on october 7th happen and this is the exactly the type of situation that is advantageous for him now because the Supreme Court of Israel can't take out Netanyahu for all his genocide because they don't have the power to anymore versus before they did. So that's another example, even outside of October 7th or outside of Palestine, that um, Netanyahu was centralizing power uh, against his own like civilians' wills. Uh, censorship resistance. Centralized actors should not have the power to interfere with giving users... Uh, interfere with any given users or applications ability to operate concerns on bad actors should be addressed to higher layers so like censorship resistance is like absolutely not the case like this is one of the most censored topics of all time you know uh even you talking about people is telling you not to do this topic um me being censored in like group chats with like other crypto people um thousands of people in the u.s losing their jobs for like tweeting anything against israel uh even the families of israeli hostages they're being like ridiculed and censored and kind of shamed for asking for answers on why their families aren't being released because they say that if you want the hostages to be released then you support hamas because that's like what hamas wants to use in hostages for negotiation so again the censorship is huge you saw with the israeli teacher too when he spoke up he was like ridiculed and censored by everyone around him um auditability it's another one of the values you should be able to validate an application's logic and its ongoing operation, uh, make sure it's operating co- or according to the rules that the developers claim it is. This is, again, Israel like provides no evidence for any of their claims. There, it, there's no audit trail for anything, and I, all, their word is always taken at face value. And uh, whether yeah, it's even a lie or not, the humanitarian aid was like, exactly. oh, we have some proofs, but we're not going to show you anything. Yeah, but the the hospital siege as well, like, oh, they're like, we know that this is the heart of the Hamas operation and we're not going to provide any evidence, but we know it. And then they go in and then they provide evidence that they lied, you know, by showing that there are no tunnels. And so even like they audit themselves and fail and then the world still like doesn't care. Um, you know, they literally self-incriminate all the time. Uh, but again, there's no accountability or auditability, credible neutrality. Uh, there's no, so again, you know, base layer infrastructure should be neutral, uh, and everyone can see it's neutral, even though they don't trust developers. So this is kind of where the U S stuff gets involved. The U S is not credibly neutral. Like the Israeli lobby in the U S has more influence on the government than like almost any other organization. And like the U S is the only one video vetoing all the UN calls for a ceasefire and, you know, uh, so there's no neutrality whatsoever um, in terms of the, like, base rule set that everyone's playing by. Um, building tools, not empires, is another one of the values. Uh, this is funny. This is, like, very on the nose. Empires try to capture and trap the user inside a walled garden. Well, that's exactly what Israel's doing to Literally. Palestinians in Gaza. So it's like, you know, it, it's... It, it's not even going against these values in terms of what Vitalik is talking about, which is like the wall. He's like saying, Oh, it's so bad that people trapped wall gardens of like technology. Like Apple is a oppressive empire, keeping people inside their walled garden technology. Meanwhile, Israel is literally keeping people inside a, a walled like hell hole and bombing them, you know, in real life. Uh, and you know, no one bats an eye or thinks that's needs to be called out. Um, cooperative mindset uh if it was at least the garden it would be nice yeah exactly um cooperative mindset the you know even when competing projects within the ecosystem cooperate on shared software libraries research security community building and other areas so you know the palestinians when the jews arrived in palestine from europe they were welcomed and given refuge by the palestinian people who were willing to be open and share their resources land and homes with their jewish cousins and so the Palestinians were being cooperative, but the people that didn't have a cooperative mindset were the Zionist settlers who didn't want to cooperate. They just wanted to take everything for themselves. And so when they come and steal their food and destroy their homes and possessions and their families and then lock them in the shed and then tell you that you're the bad guy, that's like the polar opposite 
of a cooperative mindset um, or positive sum behavior. And so, you know, this isn't like none of this is opinion either. Like this is all just documented facts. It's like, you know, uh, people will hear all this and say like, oh, you're just saying that because you're you don't like Jews or like whatever. But it, like my opinions on anything don't matter. I'm just presenting like documented facts. So, you know, this is why I think this all matters for crypto world or the crypto space. Um, and, you know, it's a very kind of privilege for us to just like talk about uh, how we can make our DAOs more decentralized when, you know, the, and, and we talk about how this is going to change the world, but the, the worst stuff that's happening in the world right now, we don't care to change it now. And in fact, uh, I won't say who it was, but, you know, someone was saying like, um, uh, I care about solving this like 80 years from now. Uh, how can we think right. ahead? Like, so it doesn't yeah. happen in a hundred years. Like if you don't care about it now, like, uh, you don't care about it in a hundred years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming on and, uh, sharing all this truth. I think we definitely need to make more people aware of all of this. And, uh, I hope this will help at least a little bit in the, yeah. in educating at least the, the web three, the web three space a bit yeah. about <laughs> these fucking yeah. atrocities because it's uh horrendous yeah and I'll, I'll say too like if i got anything wrong like please forgive me i don't like intend on I, I don't mean for everything i'm saying is like the end all be all objective truth like this is everything i'm just sharing everything i learned and and my resources and knowledge and uh if i'm wrong about something like uh, provide the counter evidence you know that's kind of like what science is about is like create the evidence and provide the counter evidence so um, the, I think I only have a problem with people who will, you know, say something or like call something out, but then not provide any sort of evidence or, you know, uh, counterpoints to it. So, you know, I don't mean to like, everyone's just like, shut up and listen to what this take is and not consider anything else. Um, cause you know, I'm not, af that's what the Israeli pro Israeli side will tell you. Cause they're afraid of the truth. I'm not afraid of the truth. I know the truth is on the side of the Palestinians, but I want people to like see that for themselves and you know uh i might have got something wrong and you know but that doesn't mean that the everything i'm saying is wrong um and of course you know like do your own research and you'll come to the same truth yeah, yeah. all right yeah well thank you again and uh please do compile the links we will include all of that in the podcast and uh i will talk to you soon sounds good man um hope your guinea pigs are doing well uh, <laughs> yeah they go well. crazy from time to time yes um yeah i appreciate you again for bringing me on and we should uh do more of these too um even not just about this topic but other stuff too mm. yeah, holes. yeah yes, for sir. sure all yeah, right man. have a nice day and talk to you soon peace